Hey guys, <laughs> I, I promise we're almost out of here. Um, I just, I talk so much that it takes forever to get through all these, you know, places and worlds. But, I think it is worth it for you guys to hear what I have to say. So, in, in the last video you guys are aware, if you watch all my videos, you are aware that I wanted to talk about a few uh, important things with you guys this time. So, if you guys are down to go with me on this journey and hear everything I have to offer and say, well then, let's get with it, huh? Um... So we got Samantha here, the usual, um, Blake Battleheart, the, the boss, the badass, whatever you want to call him. Um, yeah, he's here, obviously, that's me. Um, and well, the first thing I'm going to talk to you guys about is Tom Clancy's Division Beta. Now, by the time this video goes up, I'm, yeah, I'm sure, I'm positive the beta will be over. Uh, I played the closed beta and the open beta, and now I want to talk about it. So... If you guys don't know what the game is, I've been hyping it up for a long time. Who's this? I've been hyping it up for a long time. Um, and that is partially because I want to play with you guys, and partially because I'm just excited in general about the game. Um, it's telling me to defeat her, and she's not here. Trippy or what? Tell me that's not trippy, huh? What? Oh, okay, I figured it out. Thanks to Samantha. <laughs> I don't know what happened there, but okay. Um, Samantha, like, I, I sent her over there, and somehow she pulled a lever, and Blake wasn't able to. I don't know. Maybe I missed it, and I'm just an idiot. Um, but okay, let's let's do this. It's a death boss and an ice, so what Samantha and I are, that's what we're fighting. So I'll take out the death boss, and she can worry about the ice. Um, in Samantha's deck, I'm pretty sure I should put in some prisms. Do you guys agree? Do you guys agree? I don't hear you. <laughs> you do? You do? Okay. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Where's the map? Okay, so, yeah, back, god dang, I get sidetracked so easy. Um, we're talking about Tom Clancy's division, so here's, here's, here's what I feel about it. I was so hyped up when I first heard about this game, um, two years ago at E3. Now, um, that's, it, it's a while ago, okay, we'll agree on that. And since it was a while ago, I guess I have every right to talk about it from when it started. So at first it seemed like it was some open world uh, game where you seamlessly go from place to place with your friends in this huge map. And you go on little missions and stuff to rebuild your base. And you can upgrade your character as you go. And there's all kinds of customizations and just all kinds of crazy stuff with ultra good graphics. And you know, as time went on, you stopped hearing about it for a while until it was it got brought back up again a couple months ago, um, back in November, I believe. They really announced it, and they talked about the beta coming in February or January. I can't remember which one. Yeah, they talked about the beta, and I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. I'm gonna try and get that. And since I had the game pre-ordered, I got access to the closed beta. So when the closed beta came around. You guys with me on this? When the closed beta came around, I was definitely excited, okay? I, it, it was um, something I was really prepared for, and I played it, I played it, I played it, and I liked it, I liked it, but there was just a few things that I didn't want in the game. So first of all, they consider it an RPG third-person shooter with multiplayer, so it's, it's, a, it's a pretty big uh, title for it, I guess you could say, but... Um, what I didn't like was all the enemies are very generic. The NPCs are very boring and bland. It's like the same guys every single time, and I didn't like that. Now, but this doesn't say I don't like the game yet, so I'm just going to get into a little more detail for those of you who are actually considering buying it and you haven't played the beta. I'm sure you guys have played the open beta, but eh, who cares? I'm going to still talk about it. In addition to the boringness of the NPCs, I felt like... Uh, what's the best way to word it? I felt like because they were boring, it kind of made the entire game boring. And the NPCs were bullet sponges. You had to shoot the crap out of them. Even the weakest guys. It's literally just guys running around with a pistol and a hoodie. And occasionally one big boss. And you have to unload like seven magazines. You know, seven seven clips into the guy. And it, it's, it's ridiculous how much you have to shoot one person. 
to, to kill them, and I thought that was, uh, I really felt like that was kind of a little too much. I really want them to make the enemies weaker, and or just at least make damage more powerful, you know? And in addition to that, I know it was just a beta, but the customization, you know, you couldn't customize. I felt like they should have shown off a little bit of the customization rather than just picking a random character. Um, I'm really hoping that customization is good. And then, in addition to this, get this you guys it started off being uh the game had ultra good graphics and all that and it was just seamless playing online there's other people running around and you just like can encounter them across them doing their business and in a way it kind of the graphics have been downgraded that's for sure but i'm not i'm not so worried about the graphics like i'm not somebody who flips their freaking butt off because the graphics got downgraded like okay whatever that's fine um i'm not too you know fired up about that but uh, what i am going to say is when I first, you know, saw the first gameplay, I think it was, yeah. When I first saw the first gameplay about the game, I felt like, you know, you could just be doing your own missions, and then there's, like, random people just doing their missions, and then you guys are kind of doing your own thing, upgrading your own bases. And now it just seems like it's GTA Five. You're just running around in the streets, and there's just another kid, like, you know, in the corner teabagging a dead body. It's like, I kind of felt like it'd be more tactical, you know? Now it's just, like you camp behind cover, you throw a grenade, you shoot some bad guys, you grab your loot and you move on, you upgrade your base, repeat, repeat, repeat. And in a, in a way I felt like it was Destiny. Now, if you guys haven't played Destiny, that's like an alien game where you're on different planets, first person shooter. It had a bad field of view which really threw me off to begin with. I didn't like that. Um, and then also, you know, additionally to that being said, <laughs> yes, there's more. Um, the game, it, uh, it's Destiny, I, when I first played the beta, I told my friends right away, I said, this is going to be boring, it's the same thing, it's repetitive. You go to a planet, you shoot aliens, you grab the loot, you dip, and you upgrade your character. And I knew from the beginning that that was going to be really boring, and it was supposed to be the next big game, and I totally disagreed. And my friends were like, no, 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 you gotta buy it, dude, so I bought it, and it turned out I was right, my friends were wrong. They all agree now at this point in time that the game is awful, and... It just got really boring, and now that's the kind of thing we're all worried about with Tom Clancy's Division. Um, is it going to get boring? Is there enough customization to keep us coming back and back and back? And are the levels going to be changed? Is it going to get harder? Is the DLC going to be worth it? Those are all questions we need to keep into consideration when we get the game and voice crack. Holy shit. Um, <laughs> so the problem here is that I bought the game. I proved the game for both myself and my friend for his birthday. And, oh man, that's a lot of money to drop on a game that might not be worth it. I mean, as far as it is right now, I'm completely fine having it pre-ordered. It actually wasn't as bad as I'm making it out to be. It was a lot of fun. I'm just hoping that it gets better, okay? And the reason I'm trying to cut it some slack is because it is a beta. You haven't played the full game. Obviously, if that was the full game, no one would touch it. So, I'd just like to see a bigger variety of things, okay? I guess that's the bottom line. And, I don't know, I've probably talked enough about it. For you guys to want to kill yourself now. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, you know, it's good, it's good, it's good. I'm not going to hate anymore. Um, but it is. it does have a lot of factors that I do like about it. You know, you can upgrade your character. There's three uh, perk trees, I guess you could say. Perk lines, you can't really change what it is. You don't have, like, two separate directions within each branch, you know, but... Um, you have three options to choose from. You can actually pick two at a time, but I felt like there should have been more, maybe. But it, it kind of plays into the campaign a little bit. The campaign helps your character upgrade, and I just wish the online multiplayer was a little bit more um, seamless in a way. Anyways, I talked a lot right there, so now I want to move on to my next topic right after this. I am taken aback at your skill with magic. You have united. Journey now to the treasury and recover our treasure. Alright, go to the treasury. I don't know what that is, but uh, we'll find out, huh? So I just collected a piece for her, and she gave me this special barbican. Barbie can? Oh, I'm supposed to go to the barbie can, and I, opened up, I can open up that. And look how close I am to level 56, by the way. Holy crap. Um, okay, I don't know where I'm going with this. Uh, but the thing is here, is that... I, we're supposed to be stopping an uprising from the Piscians, I think they call them, the Piscians, yeah. We're supposed to be stopping an uprising from them, and that is supposedly going to happen. So, you know, with all that work, um, being put into Celestia, you better get something good out of it, right? 
I just can't wait to go Safaria. I'm really sick of Celestia. It's one of my least favorite worlds. Um, <laughs> I'm trying not to hate, but it is really boring and repetitive. That's that's something I really hate about it. At least in Zafaria, everything, each little place feels different. In this place, it's all the same. It's a big watery bowl, and you get to listen to dogs talk to you. And, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, guys, we're at the barbecue. Oh my god, did I just call that a barbecue? Barbican. Oh my. Barbican. Barbican. Yeah, that makes sense, right? Barbican. Barbican. Barbicant. You know, because we need that negative attitude. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so we're on to the next topic for today's video. What I do in World 110s is I basically play Wizard 101 and I talk to you guys to my best ability. And I don't know how good that is, but <laughs> I mean. If you guys watch it, you watch it, so hopefully it's entertaining. I don't know. Whoa, this looks fancy. Um. Okay, so it's a, it's a life boss here. Get rid of my prisms on Samantha. Okay. Um, so the next topic is what I told you guys a little bit about in the last video. My dad said in order to play XCOM 2, he needs a bit better computer. Okay, that makes sense. Um, he gave me a challenge. He says, for $100, can you upgrade my computer? And I'm like, no, I can't. It's, it's too little, you know, just the graphics card itself is $100. Maybe a little bit less to play XCOM 2, but, you know, I told him, you know, maybe 250 and we have a deal because I can get him a new motherboard, um, some more RAM, and a good graphics card for that much. And continue using the case and the power supply and you know whatever ram he already has and memory for uh already accounted for i guess and you know 250 dollars would be a good uh push into his computer but you know it's like a little challenge and i'm like i'm gonna have to haggle with him a little bit to make sure i get the the best possible deal so he's saying okay fine maybe 150 and I'm like all right 200 and you know it's like arguing back and forth my dad and I have a have a pretty close bond um he used to actually build computers uh a long time ago like back when computers were first coming around and uh he used to build his own but now he still tries to act like he knows everything I'm like dad you don't know anymore it's everything's changed and um yeah, he really doesn't. When he watched me build my computer, he's like, oh, wow, well, what, what does that thing do? And I'm like, Dad, it's been so long since you built computers. Don't act like you know. Okay, so he's definitely, um, you know, outdated a little bit on the technology. And I know more about building computers now. He still knows his stuff a little bit, but I don't know. He hasn't built a custom PC for a while. I built his before, and I'll build it again. So, what else am I going to say for today? Yeah, so the challenge is here is $250, right? And obviously, you can't really build a full game computer for $250, but for $350, you guys, I have a... Uh, legitly, I have a computer build guide for $350 that will get you to play GTA V on Ultra settings, running at about 35 frames per second. Now that that's pretty remarkable, but here's the drawback on this one. Um, it's I'm running a dual core for this, okay? And you know, dual core, okay, all right, that's fine. But the thing is, if you want to edit videos and do rendering, it's not for you, okay? So if you're a YouTuber, you wouldn't want to do that. If you're just a, a gamer and you want to play some, you know, pretty good games like GTA 5 with good graphics, you can definitely do this. It's just for gaming, all right? Um, you know, my computer that I'm playing on right now is, is a good balance in the middle. It's good for editing and good for gaming. It was six cores. Um, you can do editing and gaming, same time, you know, streaming all pretty seamlessly. Um, the less cores you have, the less your computer will be efficient at uh, multitasking. So, but the power of each core, or the power of your um, CPU is what determines how good it will run when gaming or focusing on one task. I guess that's the right way to word it. Um, so if you're running at like 3.2 gigahertz, that's a uh, that's okay. Um, 
it's not the best, but it's okay. Uh, you could, the one I'm running, the one I'm going to be running for the $350 build is a dual core, which means it can't do editing too well, but it can do gaming really well. And it, I think it's a uh, 3.4 gigahertz, but I can overclock it to about 4.1, which is pretty fantastic for gaming. However, later, um, not later, what's the word for it? Um, upcoming games have lately be been, um, taking advantage of multiple core CPUs. Now, that means if you have a six core CPU, they're starting to take advantage of it. There's even some games, I believe, I can't remember which one it was. There's a couple that came out in 2016 already that have been taking advantage of eight core CPUs, which is pretty awesome. Um, obviously, the cheapest eight core CPU I'm aware of is the FX 8320. That is um, just a step down from the FX 8350, which I would definitely rather get than the 8320. But um, that's AMD, you know, if you want to spend an extra couple hundred dollars, you can go up for Intel. But I mean, at that point, I'm not sure if it makes quite the difference. Just It just runs hotter and, you know, it's a little more buggy to run AMD, but it's not really a big deal, you know. Um, you're running an 8-core AMD versus an 8-core Intel. If they're both running, you know, the same power of gigahertz, it doesn't really you know, make that much of a difference in the end. But it is definitely up to you guys. Uh, if you would like to see a $350 build, or the exact one I'm talking about, go ahead and leave in the comment section. I can definitely show you how to do it, and I will potentially, this might be the one where I actually build for you guys. Um, now, well, I have one question for you guys. Specifically, like, this is a big one for this video. Would you guys rather see me build a $350 computer for gaming or a $350 computer in terms of editing and light gaming. So those are your two choices there. Um, now there's one other thing I've always, I kind of wanted to talk to you guys about, but I'll tell right, you in just a minute. You've got it. After all Level up. Just called it. Well, let me stop. Okay, so, um, I was looking in lately, I was looking into, uh, you know, like, a lot of people say, uh, Macs are good computers for editing and stuff like and I totally agree you know at school that's what we use but Macs you know for a general one is like a thousand dollars plus I'm talking there's some that are 5k uh, screen resolution okay and those are seriously like up to two thousand dollars or more even and I'm saying for like the one I was looking at it was like one thousand one hundred dollars which is crazy crap done right but for that much money you guys for $1,200, you could build a nice, nice gaming PC that's not Mac. Like, you could build a pretty freaking nice one for that. And what would you guys do? Would you rather get the Mac that's good for editing or just get the all-out gorgeous PC? And you could even spend only 1000 on the PC and then 200 on the software to run the PC. Or the software to um, run editing. I guess that would be the right word. Solarium stone repaired? Ready yourself if according to punk. Ah, uh, we have to go do more stuff. Okay, guys, so I'm gonna have to wrap up this video. I actually realized I just wanted to cancel, and it's like a little dungeon thingy, so um, we're gonna have to dip on this one, do it for next time. But make sure you guys give this video a huge thumbs up. Uh, I love you guys, and we'll see you next time.